Number 31. Explain the difference between extensive properties and intensive properties. Okie dokie. So I'm going to write over here extensive properties versus intensive properties. Okay. So it comes down to basically the difference in one word, and that one word is matter. So it all depends on matter. <laughs> See? Matter matters. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So, so extensive properties are properties that um, change due to how much matter is involved in a substance. So your extensive properties will change dependent on how much matter is in the substance. And just know that matter and we'll say um, how large the substance is, that's kind of like the same exact thing because all objects will take up matter and will have a mass. So Examples of extensive properties would be mass. You could definitely change a mass of a certain substance. For this in case and purposes, let's just think of water, right, H2O. So for all of the um, examples, I will talk about water. So depending on if I didn't drink a lot from my water bottle or a glass of water, the mass will change, right? I could have a lot of water or I could have a little water, but still it's, it's water. So a mass or masses is extensive. So let's just say that this is 100 grams and this is, you know, 50 grams. The mass can change. And since the mass can change, volumes can also change. So that's another example of an ex extensive property. You could have Small volumes, you could have large volumes. Um, let's think. Mass, volume, what else is extensive? <laughs> we'll, come, we'll come back to that one in two seconds. If I think of any other ones, usually mass and volume is the two big ones. Intensive properties... Um, we'll say does not change no matter how much matter is involved. So these are like standard information for your substance. And once again, let's talk about water. So no matter if I have a large amount of water or if I have a small amount of water, these properties, the intensive properties, will always stay the same. So let's give examples of these. Examples is melting point. So for water, no matter if I have a lot of water or a little amount of water, the melting point is always going to be zero degrees Celsius. And on the flip side, a boiling point will always be a intensive property as well. It does not change no matter how much you have of the substance. And for water, it's 100 degrees Celsius. Density is also an intensive property, right? The density for water is a standard one gram per centimeter cubed or milliliter. Um, let's think. Color is also an intensive property, right? Liquid water is always going to look the same. Pure liquid water is always going to look clear. So that's another intensive property. One other extensive property that you guys should know is heat. Now, heat is not the same as temperature. Temperature is actually an intensive property, Heat, however, how much heat energy is given off depends on how much you have. If you have a large amount of a certain substance, you will generate much more heat than if you had a small amount. So remember these three, mass, volume, and heat energy is extensive properties. Color, what 
you know, what water looks like or what any substance looks like, the temperature that it can be, melting point, boiling point, and density, these are all intensive properties. They do not change no matter how much matter is involved, no matter if it's a large amount or a small amount. So those are the differences. Guys, I hope this helped out. If it did, please hit that subscribe button because we will be giving you tons of answers that I think you would want to know for your class. But anyway, I'll see you all in the next lesson. Have a great day, guys. Bye.